Yes, it's this time of the year again. We have to talk about Nux runtime config and one mistake you should definitely avoid. Let's go. Nux runtime config feature is amazing to ensure that dynamic data like end variables can be changed during runtime and actually also reflect that in the application so you don't have to rebuild it again and again just to change some variables, also making it 12-factor compatible. But I've seen during my consultancies and projects a few mistakes people make and the most important one will cause issues so that runtime config doesn't work exactly on runtime as it should. So let's check it out. I've prepared a little demo application. We have a look at the problem, how to solve it, and then I show you even that it's now documented. Let's go. I've prepared a very simple demo application that is just a Nux config and an app.view and it's really not much going on here. Here we render a runtime config value, which is runtime config or dollar config and template, public my value, or if there is no value, we'll render the no value string. We don't use the knowledge coalescing operator here because then it would be an empty string, which would not be knowledge. And in our Nux config, well, we just say runtime config public and we set my value to some other end variable. And if we now run a dev server and switch to browser, we'll see that this shows no value so far. And that's expected because we didn't pass any end variable in here, right? So let's just do that. Let's switch back to the code and pass an end variable to the other one we've set. Let's stop the dev server and just use other end var is dev. There we go. And just start the server again. And now, as we would expect, next server starts again, that's fine. And now we should see def. And this is exactly what we're seeing. So, so far, no big problem. But the mistake that's happening here, and it's not very noticeable in def, is that actually that my value is set to another end variable. And this is something you should never ever do. Why that? We will see now. If you build, for example, a static page or do always a build and run process so you don't deploy your artifact multiple times, it won't be that visible. But let's say you have an application, you build it once and then you want to um, provide it to three inst instances with different end variables. What you would expect is, okay, let's build this, pnpm build, and maybe set other end for to build here. Oops, let's do actually build. And when it's done, we'll just run it with node.output server index.mjs. And we don't provide anything else. So once again, let's jump back to the browser and see what's happened. And here we see that build is active. Okay, so far, no big surprise. We set it during build time. But what exactly happens now if we change it to runtime? What do you think? What would you expect? Take a second and let's see. If we change the other end var to run here right now and run the whole server again, right? We're just starting it and then switch back to the browser. We'll see. Wow. It's built again and it's still built. Maybe some of you would expect, um, well, now it should be run, right? But mm -mm, it's not. And that's because that default value here, that process end other end var is just a default value. That's set. And that's evaluated on build time and that's it. It's not evaluated during runtime. So it's not really possible to use that other end var for runtime config public my value. Instead, also what the hint does here, you should override it through next public my value. And if we use that instead of other end var, so next public my value and start a server again and have a look, what would we see then? No surprise, it is a run as it should be. And that's the whole thing. Runtime config works if you use exactly the variables that match your runtime config structure. If you set the default value to another end variable or just another value, well, that works during build time. And if you always do just one build and one run, it's fine. But even there, I would not recommend it. I would instead suggest that you always use the end variables that match your runtime config structure. And the TS hint in your config says that in documentation also suggested that. Another thing that won't work are transforms. So let's jump back to the code. 
and take a look at the transforms here. If we would, for example, say, okay, if, let's use next uh, public my value and let's say dot, I don't know, trim, for example. Same idea. This would only be executed on the build time and not during runtime. So values will not be trimmed accordingly, even though the transformation is there because it's only doing that on build time and not on runtime. On runtime, we really just do a very simple replace of this value here, which might be the default, will be replaced with this if the end variable exists. Otherwise, okay, we just take the default because we set it already. And as I know, this is a pain point, not everybody watches these videos. The best thing to do is not only educate in a visual video way, but also ensure that the docs are up to date. This is why I also submitted a little pull request straight away to the docs, adding that info and saying, okay, look, let's not do this. Let's um, set a warning that you always should the correctly named environment variables and not a differently named one here. Zoom a bit in. There we go. So everybody looking to doc knows it as well, but I also know not everybody will check the updated docs every time something happens. I mean, you can't keep track of that. That's why it's nice to spread it on different channels. The people reading docs, newcomers, people seeing the videos and yeah. So to sum it up, runtime config works great, but you should only use the environment variables matching to runtime config structure. So if you have public my value, then use next underscore public underscore my underscore value if my value is camel case, as you've just seen it. In the end, it will work fine, but make sure to stick to that convention and don't use any other end variables. Don't try to do transforms that won't work. Always make sure that you provide the right values when using the end variables. That's it. I hope you learned a thing or two and you won't make that mistake next time, even if you just have a static side that you build, it still doesn't hurt. That at some point you might say, hey, let's flip the switch, let's do multi instances and then that will bite your butt. So let's not do this, fix it right away. Comments, questions, anything left? As usual, please drop it down in the comments and then I'm more than sure I'll see you to the next video on the channel or maybe somewhere else. Happy hacking, see you soon.